Good evening and welcome to Alex Tremaine's streams. I'm Alex Tremaine. I'm an old man who builds Gundam. Um, I've been away a little while. Um, in real life has been inconvenient. It's still moderately inconvenient with the whole ball of fusion reactor death in the sky causing it to be about 27 degrees Celsius here which is frankly insane for this part of the world. Um, Actually, I don't know. Let's let's investigate. What is the actual temperature? What is thirty degrees? Okay, thirty degrees. Fuck that. Fuck it right in the ass with the knobbly stick. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm Alex Train. I build Gundam. Um, I'm going to be building Gundam in this sweltering heat. If there is a background hiss, that's my fan. I'm really sorry, but you're just gonna have to suck it up because it's either the fan or I go and fall over somewhere else in a different room where I can't build Gundam. Um, <clears throat> so those are your picks basically. You can have one or the other. Um, so yeah, it's been a little while um, and we're gonna start a brand new build today. Um, I put a thing out on Twitter, whole ones of you voted. Uh, and the two of you who did vote both voted for the same thing, which is kind of fortunate for you guys, I guess. Sorry, just plugging my camera. Okay, how are we now? Is that improved? Are we, are we in the, I'm gonna put this. Okay, we're fixed. Excellent, that's great news. That means it was not the fan. Or is that, or is that, yes, it's still there. Now I am confused. Rob, now be quiet. Well, let's try this again. How, how, how's that now? Can you hear me? Am I audible? Is the world there? I'm hoping, hoping that we're all back to normal. Excellent. Right. Wonderful. That's great news. So back to where we were. We're building this. I put it on the top down cam, but it's not going to fit terribly well. Um, Here it is, the uh, Sazabi, the Master Grade. It's a big old box. Um, so, I'm going to put it over here out of the way. Uh, I have yet to crack this box open. We will discover the contents together. Um, so, let's. Uh, Let's 
let's see what the world provides us with. Everything in here is very red. No shock there. Um, there are a lot of parts to this. Also, no shock there. So, where are the instructions hidden? That's the question. There's also... There's also a lot of tiny fucking stickers. I don't know if, if we can... Look at all of this bullshit. Look at it. Look at how miserable this is. Oh yes, Miss Temperance, I know I, I know your deep seated problematic fondness for stickers. Uh, right, so let's just Apologies, there's going to be a bit of crinkling while I try and find the instructions. The instructions were not on that side of the box. We are nearly done with the crinkling, but we do have instructions. So, right. Let's just try and fix that. Okay, so what do we got here? We've got a lovely, uh, lovely shot of the finished product. We've got some nice colour guidance going on. A, uh, a clear view of everything that it comes with. I do love these opening little, what I'm assuming are rocket packs. I think they're great. I love these opening shoulder things as well. Everything about this makes me happy. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's see what we can let's see what we can do with this. So we have a list of parts, and unlike oh no no, there's several things on sprue T that we don't need. So unfortunately. This one is not listing the sprues that we need at the beginning of each step. So we're going to be running a bit of trial and error here um, with what we've got, but we'll, we'll, we'll work with what's here and see what we can do. So we definitely need sprue M. So what does sprue M look like when it's at home. Are we needing a sprue? M, 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 okay. So we are not needing sprue K. What's in here? This is Sprue J and Sprue R1. We do need Sprue R1. So, Sprue R1 can go on the hanger. got in here? F2 and I. Neither of those have come up yet. What is 
easy nice bag T to an LR we do need screw T I thought we might I suspect we will also need sprue L, so we'll put that to one side just temporarily. Sprue T is our flexible joint sprue. Uh, so we'll put that here. Uh, we are not going to need the hands just yet. Uh, and B1 doesn't seem to be um, um, uh, oh no we are going to need sprue B1 so we will put that up here I also saw that we need sprue B2 So sprue B2 will go with sprue B1. This is sprue D. Did I see us needing sprue D? Yes, we need sprue D for the torso. So that can go on a hanger. Hands can go out of the way for the moment. What have we got here? Sprue C and Sprue S. I don't think we need any of those right now. This is the shield and the gun. What have we got here? H. And the second H. It's in this one. Q, another Q, and O. I don't think any of those are on our list right now. Um, there are two screw P's there, or neither of which we need. G isn't on our list. Uh, so, what have we got here? We've got A2 and R2. I know we need A1. Oh yeah, no, we need R2 as well. Ooh. I like this. Um, I like this silvery metal effect. That's really nice. Uh, so. Let's move you. B2, B1, R1. This is A2. This is R2, which can go with R1 on the hanger. We need E1 right now. What have we got in here? Sprue M! Aha! And Sprue A1. So Sprue A1 can go on a hanger next to Sprue A2. And Sprue M. Can go on a hanger as well. Right, I think that that will get us started. Um, spin that round. Ooh. One moment.
Aha! I'm no longer blurry. Right, let's um, let's get started then with Sprue M. Sprue M 10, 11 and 16. Uh, so that's 10, 11 and... 10, 11, 16. So I hope you're all having a lovely time out there. Um, in case I haven't mentioned, it's too fucking hot. The world is a furnace. And it can all get into the sea. Um, this is hell and we live in it. I'm going to be taking more frequent breaks than normal today, just as a warning, both because of the aforementioned it's fucking hot and therefore I'm going to be going through drinks like nobody's business. Mm. Uh, and because there's the stuff I need to check on, which won't take long to check, but does mean I've got to take breaks here and there. So, apologies for that. Uh, right. Uh, do we need anything else? No. And later on, there may be a little surprise. But we'll see how, we'll see how things go. did my first full day in the office in well over a year. I have been back into the office on several occasions since Christmas, um, but only for specific meetings. Um, today I had a meeting I needed to be in the office for, but well, apparently lockdown restrictions are ended. Um, and uh, there is a move to not a very strenuous move at my place to be fair but there is a move to do a bit more in the way of of being in the office um, they're trying to persuade us that you know two days a week might be good uh, I've managed one day this week and we'll see how things go I don't mind going back onto site as long as there's actually a reason for it um, which thankfully is broadly my boss's opinion as well um, I mean my job does my job does have things whereby you know, I'll get that up a bit. there are aspects to my job whereby being actually on site could be valuable, um, depending on the situation. So it's not out of the realms of possibility that we can we can arrange for my days on campus to coincide with that. But going into work just to sit at a desk and do exactly the same work I would do at home in more comfort without having to, you know. go to work and get up earlier in order to go to work and everything that comes with leaving the house um, I don't see the point in I don't see the point in presenteeism I think that's the term being there for the purpose of just being there it's a waste of everybody's time and more specifically it's a waste of my time and my petrol money. But hey, we'll see what happens. 
As I say, they're being pretty reasonable about it at the moment, which is a relief. My work has been very cautious throughout the whole thing in its response to changes, so they have not, with the uh, end of official lockdown, they have not leapt to get everybody back into the office. They are being extremely cautious, which I approve of. Hopefully they will stay that way. Anyway, how are you all out there in the world? Assuming that there's anybody actually watching this at all. How is the world treating you? I am broadly doing okay. treated worse by the world. As I say, I could I could stand for this heat to go away. I've been I played a few new computer games recently, which is good. I can if you enjoy stuff like um, the XCOM games or similar squad based tactical turn based styly then I can uh, yeah super glue is the worst um, Miss Temperance there's, I, I, I don't know what to tell you super glue is the worst um, it, the, the reason super glue is the worst is because it does exactly what it says it's going to do which is stick anything to any or well almost anything to almost anything and do it almost instantaneously um, which makes it shockingly unforgiving. Um, let's get this the right way up. <clears throat> so, this goes in here. And then this goes on here. Like... So, wooden sprues, you say? <clears throat> that does explain the super glue. How are your wooden sprues going? A116. Oh, F1. How did I miss this F1? What the hell sprue is F1? Have I seen F1? In F1. F1 is this sprue. F117 we got A116 oh, A115 as well teach me to pay attention 
A115, A116, F117, that's A115, which is this one here. So first thing is A116 onto the front. And this is where we discover discover if these silver parts are a coating or if they're actually coloured silver. this being a coating. Okay, that means we will not be trying to sand anything here. So that goes on the front like so. model railway kits. Well, I hope the um, I hope the glue does not I hope the glue does not vex you too much. And I hope your kit comes out well. and I was talking about something. Computer games, yes. So, if you like XCOM turn-based tactical shooty things, um, have a look at... Uh, well, there's two recommendations, actually. One that I played recently, one that I played a little bit back. Uh, the first one, uh, the one I played recently, is uh, Troubleshooters Abandoned Children. Um, which is a, uh, I believe, I believe Korean. I think I'm getting that right. Um, game. Uh, it's got a very sort of. It's got a bit of a anime aesthetic to it, although it's probably more sort of, is it manhua, the Korean equivalent of, of anime, uh, of manga rather, I don't know, either way, it's got that kind of aesthetic to it, it's real pretty, it's got some fun systems, um, the class and um, skill progression systems are are quite interesting um, and the story is story and setting are fun as it stands um, there's nothing groundbreaking about it but it's a it's a pretty enjoyable implementation of that style of game um, If, uh, however, 
if you've enjoyed XCOM, but what you wish was more in your XCOM was late 70s, early 80s Cold War settings, then I would recommend with me a second because I need to double check the name because I always get the name mixed up with a different game it's not because there are two games with fairly similar names and one of them is one thing and one of them is something completely different though still spy related let me just finish sending this is called Phantom Doctrine um, and it is it, well it's exactly what I say it's um, it's uh, how is this going in I see it's just going in like so. There we go. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Oops. So it's, a, it, again, it's a um, it's a turn-based tactical um, tactical squad thing um, like in the vein of the XCOM series uh, but its setting is a sort of late 70s early 80s cold war spy thriller um and you get to play either um either the cia or the kgb and you get to unravel the mystery of what's going on um there's Quite a lot to it. There's a little sub games about um, sort of uh, out of sort of in the downtime base building section. There are there is a little sub game about um, uh, finding and decrypting intelligence, which is kind of cool. Um, Give it a try if that is your jam. Um, I enjoyed it. I keep meaning to go back and replay it because it was—it's got some replay value, but I have so many games to play. Uh, right, so T13. This is T. Uh, T13. That is T13. True to the spirit of late 70s, early 80s Cold War spy thrillers, you can uh, you can take your enemy's agents and brainwash them um, with keywords, so that when you say their their keyword, they will you know become brainwashed people on your side during missions, which is kind of cool. Turn them into sleeper agents. That's the phrase I was looking for. There we go. Sorry, camera gone blurry again. Right, M8 and M9. 
Screw M. Which one's M? This one. M8 and M9. Let's these two. So keep looking at the PC version of Persona 4 Golden that I own and thinking I really must sit down and replay that game. I completed it, I platinumed it on the Vita, which was much fun. Um, But it is such a good game, I would kind of like to play it again. I think it would be most enjoyable. If you've never played it, there's another one I would strongly recommend. I mean, I'd recommend all of the Persona games. Well, no. I'd recommend Persona 3, 4 and 5. Um, 3 is where it really sort of understood. 3 is where it hit its stride, where it understood what its own mechanics should be and where it really developed that sort of unique dungeon crawl and social engineering combination um, which sir has served it so well since um, Persona 1 really feels its age now I wouldn't bother um, Persona 2 you can only get half of Persona 2 so Again, I've not I have the first half of Persona 2. Um, you can get it on the Vita. Don't know if you can get it on any other. Um, if there's any other um, platform you can get it on. Also been, I have been playing a bit more satisfactory, which again I have been enjoying rather a lot. here. So this needs to be this way. This then goes in here like so. And this then slides in here like so. And we have the socket of a ball and socket joint here. And this is then sliding
into here, like so. I cannot tell if that has gone all the way in. I think it has. I think. I think that's gone all the way in, I'm not sure. Anyway. Right. So what's next? R19 and R18. R189 and 11. R1. R1 is this. So R1. Eight. as well for the next step. Persona 3 is where it really hit its stride. You can get Persona 3. Oh, there's Persona 3 Portable on the Vita. You can get Persona 3, you can get the PlayStation 2 Classic version on the PS3, I believe. I don't know if you can get it for the PS4. Um, I really would like them to do a Persona 3 update to go with the Persona 4 Golden update. That would be really nice. I would like Persona 3 on the PC. they've done Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne recently, what Lucifer's call as it was in this country, but that's still very expensive for what it is right now, I wouldn't, I would hold on until that one's in a sale. Don't get me wrong, it's very good, but it's not, you know, it's not over 50 quid's worth of good, in my opinion. Not for a, what is an essentially a PS2 re-release. Where you've got to buy DLC just to get the same content that was in the standard PS2 release. Um, Is 
the game that may make me finally crack and look at PS2 emulation on the PC because I kind of fancy playing it again but by the same token I don't fancy paying well over 50 quid for a game I already bloody own I'm going to give it a chance to uh, come down in price before I make that decision there. Oh Harry, how you doing? How is life treating you? Life here is currently extremely warm. So I'm sitting in front of a fan and building my first 17 hour work day that doesn't sound good I'm gonna be honest with you that sounds miserable I'm hoping it's good because it's over say about work today is that going into the office meant I was actually somewhere that was air conditioned which isn't the thing that really happens in this country in homes air conditioning is very much a sort of offices and shops kind of thing so actually being forced into the office was not the worst thing in the world it had some small upside to it sounds like a hell of a day Harry that's um that's 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 a whole bunch of stuff you did there um you um you deserve a rest I imagine you're about ready to keel over at this point Five tons of concrete. Woof. I'm hoping you you that was not by hand that you had some kind of you know mechanical assistance with that. Some variety of substantial power tool. Well, at least you had the jackhammer. I had visions of you trying to deal with that using a um, using a bloody sledgehammer and a pickaxe. And hey, using the jackhammer has got to be at least a little bit fun.
I've never used one myself. And I imagine using one for an extended period probably gets old quite quickly. But there's got to be a little bit of entertainment in using one. Uh, no, this way round. Uh, no, let's get this right. This way round. There we go. That's correct. And then we move that down. bet it hurts. The vibration from um, the vibration from using a jackhammer has got to real, really fuck you up and then all of that lifting and carrying a concrete. Woof. I don't envy you that at all, Will Harry. I do not envy you that at all. Well, I shall I shall attempt to be as entertaining as possible for you um, whilst you attempt to seek uh, attempt to uh, recover enough to sleep right so this goes on here like so and T14 T14 we have two T14s I wonder if we're going to make this all over again if this is something that goes identically on both sides um, oh, I see, yep. Yeah. So this goes on. on there like so uh, and yes in fact we do then just do that all entirely again right yeah well I, I hope that works for you Harry I really do because yeah the sleep is going to be the best thing for you at this point it really is Right, I'm afraid I'm going to take a very quick break because glass is empty and it's still like nearly 30 degrees in this. Um, woo, I am blurry. Let's be not blurry. Uh, so I'm going to run downstairs and grab a drink. Uh, I will be back in a very short number of minutes and I shall see you all in a moment.
Ooh, I come back to total blurriness. Let's fix that. Right, hi, uh, I'm back. Um, if you joined us while on break, I'm Alex Tremaine. I'm an old man that builds Gundam, and today we are building the Master Grade Sazabi Vercar. We have started. Here it is. So, we had built one joint of some variety. I'm guessing hip, but I'm not sure. Might be shoulder. Difficult to tell at this stage. Not sure where it's going to be fitted. Uh, and now we do the second one, which means we need sprue R2. And we need 8, 9 and 11. And 12. It's the same as on the other one. This screw just has slightly less on it than R1. And 10, 11. And 12. 
<laughs> Only three high grades and entry grades. My um, my backlog is so the backlog currently stands at. I guess this Zazabi isn't included because we are now building it and therefore if we are building it it's not in backlog. Uh, so we have the MG Heavy Arms Custom. The MG Heavy Arms Eigel Unit. We have the MG Barbatos with the MG Barbatos Expansion Kit. We have a perfect grade unicorn with an LED unit to go in it and the perfect grade um, strike freedom. Uh, that's the current backlog. It's not sophistry from building it, it's not part of the backlog. I'm building this which means it's not part of the backlog anymore. It's how it works. The list of sin. It's not a list of sin. It's it's a list of joy. Hey Shitty, how you doing? Oh, I was I was going to bring a surprise back with me when I came back from break. Bear with me two seconds. So here's the surprise. This is Osiris. He is small. He is small and very escape ridden. Indeed a backlog guard kitty. He has been having an exciting day meeting, meeting his other compatriots. Here we go. Uh, let's just move that out of the way briefly. Here he is. You can see that he is small, but he is also dangerous and therefore he can't stay there for long. So let's hang on a second. Let's do... Uh, where's the button? There's the button. Here he is. No, no, detach from shirt, kitten. Detach from shirt. Detach from shirts, shirt, so that you can become famous on the internet, or at least you know, adored on the internet, if not famous. Here we are. We are confused. Uh, yes, Osiris seems to be. Um, Osiris seems to be seems to be where we're going with this. Hello. We are we are full of we are full of energy and we are full of inquisitiveness which means that we can't be in here 
unless we're very closely supervised, doesn't it? Because we will destroy all everything and we will eat the uh, forbidden sprinkles and everything will be bad. So unfortunately, he can't um, he can't stay in here with us. <sighs> Detach from shirt. He does indeed have the crazy kitten eyes. Come, come on. We're leaving. Oh, he, he's he's just Velcro in kitten form at the moment. He sticks to everything. Um, he's he has spent an exciting day today, learning to uh, learning to get on with one of the other cats in the house. Um, he has been introduced to Thor today, who is our. 18 month ish old Maine Coon um, Norwegian Forest Cross, who is, um, I don't know, he's about 10 times the size of him. His paws are nearly as big as Osiris's head. Um, it's hilarious. Uh, and despite some, some initial, um, let's go back to this despite some initial sort of hesitancy and some initial um, some initial hissing and growling they, they are now one of them is following the other around like a shadow and I'm not sure which way around it is um, but but they don't seem to be apart very much now um, and it's kind of adorable because because the Cyrus is so very small and Thor is so very large. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's fair, more Harry. Um you've gotta you gotta make use of you gotta work with what you've got. <laughs> Shitty, do not encourage do not encourage my kittens to be complete disasters the 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 reason they are not allowed into uh the reason they are not allowed into this room is because of the gumpla and that won't be changing anytime soon they get special dispensation but they're only allowed in if they're being snuggled essentially because that prevents that preve prevents kitten gumpler interaction disaster <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm sure they would shitty and gold star for the pun I, I appreciate it um, unfortunately I do fear exactly what a power effect grade actually is um, and I'm rather fond of my perfect grades. Oh, speaking of which, I should probably, I should probably show off the Banshee Norn, um, which is now finished. Which is why we're starting the Sazabi, because um, the Banshee Norn is finished. Let me um, finish building this joint and then I'll see if I can make my way past my own traps to uh, to get to where I've stashed the Banshee Norn. Or I might dig the Banshee... No, I'll hold off and I'll dig the Banshee Norn out on the next break so I'm not rattling around whilst... Um, so I'm not rattling around whilst the microphone and camera's on. To 
too much. So yes, Osiris is um, Osiris and Thor are providing plenty of entertainment at the moment. Osiris hasn't been interested to the interested introduced to the two girls yet, um, but there we want to get him settled with Thor first because um, the two girls are allowed outside. Um, Thor and Osiris won't be allowed to go outside um, because people will steal them. Um, because, as I say, Thor is um, Thor is a Maine Coon Norwegian Forest Cross, and Osiris is pure blood, um, pure blood Maine Coon. So he is also going, believe it or not, going to be a big boy, um, perhaps even bigger than Thor when he grows up. Um, but they will not be allowed outside, so they're going to be spending more time together than they are with the girls. Thor's fine with the girls, but um, we wanted to do the introduction, do the introductions in a staged process, so as not to over overwhelm the smallest beast, the temporarily smallest beast. Ooh, which um, which Iron Blood and or Iron Blooded Orphan kits are you after? I've got to admit, I am I am very much looking forward to um, to digging into the Barbatos at some point. Um, the the Master Grade Barbatos looks really really fucking sweet, um, and as I say, I got the I was extremely lucky. I managed to lay my hands on um, on the uh, Barbatos expansion kit for the the Master Grade, um, which looks frankly very cool. Seen a lot of positive reviews of the uh, of the Master Grade Barbatos as well. It seems to be a very popular kit. So this then goes on there, and then we need the other T14, which is off the rubbery sprue. There we go. And this then needs to go on. So we have these, they are mirror images. Um, I don't know if these are going to be shoulder or hip joints, but I guess we will find out. Let's, let's see where this leads us. Uh, signs point to shoulders. So this goes in. Oh, I 
me see. This goes in here like so. D1 and D2, so sprue D. Is this sprue D? Yes, it is. Uh, D1 and D2 are these up here. D1. D2. It's weird I'm having to do. Do, do, do. Uh, Barbatos Lupus. Yep. Pastroth. Cool. I, I'm quite fond of the, um, I'm quite fond of the Iron-Blooded Orphans, um, mobile suit design, just in general. Um, I think they did a good job with that show. Um, I think the Barbatos is probably still my favourite. Um, I need to actually sit down and watch the show. I've heard it's very good, but I've also heard it's kind of miserable. Um... Not bad, miserable, just that the story is kind of sad. Um, so I've not really been in the mood for it. Um, but it is, as with several Gundam anime, it is on my list. Yeah, there's some good there's some good stuff out there. I'd be interested in I mean for me, non Gundam wise, I'd I'd be I would love to see Gumpla style kits for the Battletech. Um for the Battletech mechs. I would very much like a perfect grade Mad Cat or or similar. Um, that would be really sweet. Yeah, I've heard Hathaway's out. I that I really do need to sit down. I love, I dearly love the Penelope and the Z, or the she. I don't know exactly how that's being pronounced, um, but I I love those two. They are so... The Hathaway <laughs> mobile suits are just so over the top and I love it. <laughs> they seem to be... Um, they seem to be very much from, from a similar design philosophy as the Razzle, which I, I think is just fabulous love the razzle um and the the suits from hathaway seem to be like the razzle except turned up to 11 which is not bad going because the razzle's fucking daft
you know, there is no shortage of over the topness with the resl in the first place. So yeah, Hathaway's on my list, um, Unblooded Orphans is on the list. I really should watch Unicorn, given how fond I am of the Unicorn suits. I really should watch um, Gundam Unicorn. Yeah. I, I have been very disappointed that the Hathaway mobile suits are only available in high grade at the moment. I would love a real grade or a, or a master grade version of those suits. Yeah, localization is always such a such a long process. Uh, so D two goes on. Have I got this the right way around. I think so. Yes. You've watched it, have you, Shitty? It's from your from your comment. It sounds like you enjoyed it. Worth watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with you. War Harry, we definitely need some more um, undergated master grades. Um, it's a bit weird coming back to to doing this master grade after the um, ah, there we go after doing the the perfect grade Banshee Norn, where undergating was it was unusual not to find undergating on the Banshee Norn. Um, on the perfect grade and this is this is I haven't found an undergate yet on this one um, yeah I would dearly love for there to be a bit more undergating going on <laughs> okay I shall I shall bear that in mind um, I mean I should probably watch just probably just watch the first series of of OG Gundam from the 70s because I haven't done that They clearly know that undergating is the way to go because they're doing it on their more expensive kits. It's the problem is whether whether they how much more expensive is undergating for them. You know what what on the economies of scale what does undergating cost them for the benefit that they that we get out of it. You know um, that's the that's the problem. 
and sadly I don't know the answer to that. But I will I will always sing the praises of undergating. is looking more like a torso there we go we've got one moving part as at the moment or one moving armor part anyway obviously these shoulder pieces move somehow uh, right so what's next m7 and m6 one on each side m M. Is this M? No. This is Sprue M. M7 and M6. Seven and six. Here we go. I don't think I've actually seen any undergating on a master grade I've built yet. I don't know if that's because I've been building older master grades or if it's because they haven't really done any undergating on master grades yet. I've certainly come across it on both. Um, I've certainly come across it on the newer perfect grades and on the real grades. I was undergating on both the real grade unicorn and the real grade um, new, the real grade new Gundam had undergating um and there was undergating on the perfect grade banshee norn uh, there wasn't on either of the other perfect grades i've built the perfect grade zeta and the i don't think there was any under or there was very minimal undergating on the strike rouge but again they're both slightly older kits Yeah, I mean, if it's... The problem with companies... Is they're going to be like, well, we could do that. Or we could just be cheap asses. I mean, I'd suck up the cost, but, you know... Somebody somewhere is going to be doing a, a bit of cost-benefit analysis and deciding if making the kits one or two quid more expensive is going to um, is going to reduce their sales enough that the um, that the price hike is that the hi price hike isn't going to pay for itself. There's got to be somebody making that assessment somewhere, and I don't know what the answer is. Could go either way, I guess. And therein lies the problem. Yeah, I guess they're. I guess for the SD kits, they're just trying to make them as as cheap as possible. Should probably look at some. Keep 
definitely need to look at some of the um, some other kits. Maybe not. Maybe not robot kits. Let's see what's out there. And other robot kits as well. moment I'm just sort of I'm largely just buying the robots that I see that look cool um, it's a strategy that's working for me at the moment So he asks himself now that he's got them completely mixed up, are these completely identical? Signs point to yes. Yeah, I like the idea of the entry grades. They're a, they're a good, a good thought, I think. Right, so that clips on there like so. Yeah, I, I looked at the Penelope and Z kit and I was tempted, but I do, I think I'm just going to hold off until I can get, until they release. They've got to release a master grade version of the Penelope and I will absolutely snap the hand off for a Master Grade Penelope I'd snap the hand off for a Perfect Grade Penelope as well to be honest or Z but the Penelope is is slightly more over the top, and that's that's my jam. Um, right, so what's the next step? The next step is I ten and eleven sprue I. I saw a sprue I. Where did I see a sprue I? Sprue J. You are the two sprue K's. Is this? This is sprue I and sprue F2. One or two entry grades from Very Light series. Yeah, absolutely. I think. I think entry grades are a good way for people to find out if they're into it. Um, I think that's a, I think that's a very sensible idea. Um, uh, so I'm um, I11 and I12, which are these two. I cannot argue with that idea, Will Harry. As I say, getting people into it is is part of the trick. Um, not everybody is going to be like me who jumps in with a real grade as their first kit. Actually, no. Let's keep this down here for the moment. Um, you know. Oh no, we need we need i nine and i ten as well. Which are these two? Dunk. Dunk. Yeah, absolutely. There's, you know, there's got to be, there's got to be options for people who can't afford the bigger kits. You know, I, 
I am an extremely fortunate human who is in a position where I can, I can broadly speaking buy a master grade, maybe two, two master grades a month, and not really worry about it too hard. Um, I look at the master grades and the real grades, which are around the same price as each other around in in the UK at any rate. I look at the master grades and real grades, and I'm like, yeah, you know what, fine. That's a that's that's some disposable income gone for this month and and that's fine but you know not everybody's in that position um, and it is nice to have the cheaper options available for people but also it's nice to have the simpler options for people who don't want something complex for me for me the joy is in the build i mean don't get me wrong i love the finished products as well but the joy is in a nice interesting build i i enjoy the the complexity of the build um but equally you know for some people the joy is in the progress and the completion and and the the smaller simpler kits give that um, give that um, give that result, you know. And it's horses for courses. It, it's it's what works for me doesn't work for, doesn't necessarily work for other people. And what you know, everybody's different and wants something different out of the hobby and. and supporting all of those different build styles is is something that they have to um, they have to work out how to do there it is I knew there was another nub mark somewhere Yeah, I, I will admit I I I'm there with you, more Harry. I I I very much did something similar. I watched some builds of high grades and and entry grades, and I I looked at the I looked at the real grades and the um, and the master grades, and I was like, well, you know what? I want something that I want something that just that's just a bit more than a high grade. Um, but also, sort of at least initially, I don't want something that's physically large. So let's try a real grade and see see how it goes. Um, and you know, now I'm running out of space. So that's fine. I really have to put up my shelf this weekend. Hopefully the temperature is going to drop sufficiently that I, go, I can do that. What is going on with this music? Let's do that. Because I tell you what, I am done with this weather. We had our um, we had our garden relandscaped um, nearly two weeks ago. They finished now. The last thing they did was lay the turf. So we've been turf went down and then we've been essentially in a heat wave since so we've been trying to keep it at least moist enough that it will bed in 
without um, without dying on us, which has been a bit of an adventure. Thankfully, it's not an enormous lawn. To look at the look at some of their master grades as well, some of the older master grades, and and bring out some updated versions of them with a bit more. I think one of the things I've really noticed is the the difference between the real real grade full armor unicorn and the master grade full armor unicorn. Um, they're uh, they are very different kits and the most interesting thing is that the the real grade is the one with which has more more surface detail in the molding itself um, which I didn't expect um, there is significantly more surface detail in the plastic on the real grade than there is in the master grade for the unicorn. And of course the previously mentioned undergating. Uh, high grade X20O strike freedom. Yeah, that uh, that makes sense. I decals are the bane of my existence. They look so good and they're so frustrating to apply. Um, I, I think it's just a change in I think it's just a change in um, in sort of design philosophy I think it's because I don't think it's necessarily anything to do with the with the difficulty of it I think it's just that real grades are newer therefore they're working to newer principles and the newer principles are we have is that for this price point we have more surface detail in the mold um, certainly newer master grades that i built the resil which i think is a bit newer than the um i think is a bit newer than the than the unicorn master grade um, the resil has more surface detail in it From what I can tell so I need to look and see what more um, more recent master grades are I guess the Barbatos I think is a more re is one of the more recent master grades I'll have to have a look at what that's like when I do the build surface detail wise this doing all of this uh, doing all of this sanding the I got so used to the undergates that uh, this is I mean not that I didn't do sanding on the undergates because I'm me
but undergates allow undergates are more forgiving. Yeah, yeah, it would be nice to, um, it would be nice if, uh, if they could get that going. I'll tell you what, that tiny little kitten has an enormous set of lungs on it. For all that it is a quarter of the size of the next biggest cat in the house, and a tenth of the size of the biggest cat in the house, it is by far and away the loudest cat in the house. Yeah, these are um, these are a brass ruler that I cut up um, with a grinder into appropriate size. It's just a 15 centimeter brass ruler, uh, which I chopped up into sections, um, so I can dip it in water and, like, I mean, you you've gone for aluminium. Um, I went for brass so that it could go in the water. Um, and yeah, this is. Um, the, this one is 1500 grit and then this one is 7000 for the for the polish off it works pretty well go that's those bits done what's next we need m1 and m2 uh, this is m i think yes so m m1 I'm glad you're. Um, I'm glad it's easing off for you, War Harry. Go and get yourself some sleep. It's been lovely to have you here as always, but um, but yeah, get yourself some uh, get yourself some rest. You deserve it. You've uh, you put in a hell of a day's work today, by the sound of it. So go and um, go and catch yourself some shut eye before uh, before you've got to get up for work again. You poor bastard.
This is this one. So how does this work? So this goes in like so. This goes in like so. Ooh. God damn it. Stay where you put. There we go. Right. That. Is that correct? I think it must be. So if that goes that way. This must go this way. I was doing way more work than I needed to be doing. This goes on like so. And clips in place like that. This is looking more like a torso. So what's next? Actually, what is next? Is I'm finishing this drink, I'm going to get another one. So I'm gonna go on break briefly. And I should be back very shortly.
I return. Let us continue to do this thing. So we had got to the end of step 1.7, on to step 1.8. F115 and F116 and some variety of sticker hell. Uh, F1, which is F1. <coughs> Apologies. If I hit the microphone there. Right, F1. So we need F1. 15 and 16 and sticker 5 So one sixteen. Get rid of these knob marks.
Oh, I think that's coming out okay. So, what are we doing with this sticker? Sticker number five. Okay, let's get the tweezers out. Let's see if it's a different way. These stickers are weird. Semi-translucent. Okay, you know what? That is a subtle but effective... That is a subtle but effective uh, sticker that. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. That looks really good. I hate stickers, but they look fantastic. Uh, right, so this has to go here, I believe. Like so. There we go. And then this one needs to go on top. And this one does not require a sticker, and we're all very happy about that fact.
Nice. Nice, nearly there on this one. That should be what we need. Yep, that looks good. And then this going into It's more like it. Yes, there we go. So that's that now opens like so. Or closes like so. And we have an extremely loud kitten at the door. Right. He is very cute. And the meowing is also very cute, but he cannot come in. If he gets bored, then Thor will, um, Thor, Thor, I'm sure, will provide him with some degree of entertainment. Uh, but yeah, the torso is torso is coming along quite quickly here. Um, and there's a there's a fair amount of articulation built into this, which is nice. And it has some nice transformational effects, which I'm always a fan of. So, let's see what's next. So, i5, i1, uh, sprue i. This is sprue i, isn't it? Over here, yes. So, i1. I1 
I5, which is this one. I5, I1, B1, 15. B1, 15. B1, 15. And D5. This is sprue D. Ooh. That's, um, that's awkward. That is a piece that has come off by itself. We will put that in. We will put that in the sticker bag. Uh, an interesting idea, Shitty, but um, I, I think I'm going to break the rules on this one. Uh, and then we need D5, which is this. I'll, I'll save it for later, I think. I'm sure it will come up eventually and be relevant. Uh, right. So everything is attaching itself to D5. I should have done this earlier, but if anybody is not aware, Shitapopu is also a streamer. He streams Gumpler Building uh, on Saturdays, and he streams um, I, I believe the the definition he uses is weeb games on um, on Tuesdays. You should check him out. He's very cool. I mean, I'm sure everybody here is already following your shitty, but, you know, there's always a possibility. <laughs> uh, likewise, Life Sapichi was in chat earlier. I don't know if she's still around, but um, she also streams model kit building, though of a slightly different variety. Um, the last build I believe was a uh, a camping caravan which was very cool and looked far too complex for my tastes. Throwing out gumpler boxes, oof. Yeah, I'm going to have to bite the bullet and throw out some empty gumpler boxes at some point. I haven't done so yet. And I've got some now. And they're quite large and they take up space. Um, and I really should throw some of them out. Particularly the perfect grade boxes are very large. Right, there we go. So, that's that. And we've got... this.
That's quite all right, life is peachy. I don't often get to watch a stream, but I do enjoy it when I do, so. Always more than happy to plug people. I'm just very bad at remembering to do so. So this goes in here like so, and then this yellow bit is next, and this is going this way round and then this one or at least smooth. I guess flat is not necessarily want out of what we want out of these curved surfaces. So, that looks pretty good. So, what's next? Uh, we need I2. Nineteen. 
Come on. M. 19. M19. And we need B1. Okay. This is kind of cool. as well right so we're not going to need to worry about cleaning that bit up we are going to want to clean this one that is going to be visible clip on over here. So this, that one we probably I suspect we're not going to need to worry about that one. reasonably well. Um. 
Um, so. That goes on like so. And then we have all of these. side that's going to be like that. Tiny, tiny parts. Always delightful. And more importantly, tiny parts that need sanding. Even more delightful. So, the way this apparently works... ...is that we string these things on... ...like beads...
What grid do I use? So the right, that's half of that done. Uh, right, this is this was at some point 320 grit. It's probably much finer than that now. I haven't replaced that in a while. Um, I'd prefer to be using around about 500 grit for that one. Um, the darker file here is 1500 and the pale one that I use for polishing is 7,000 um, which um, which does the job quite nicely gives a nice smooth finish yeah the 700 is the, the 7,000 is is really it feels very smooth to the touch when you're actually sort of it barely feels abrasive um, which which is why it sort of works in the wet and dry quite well because it prevents it getting loaded up quite so much but it does give um, it does give a very smooth finish I mean the 15 the 1500 is probably actually sufficient but um, but the 7000 just really finishes things off. Uh, yes. Um, I mean, the, the. It's not perfect. It depends how deep the white marks are. Um, so, what way around is this? Okay, so this is actually just going the same the same way Ooh, come on there it is same way around all the way around okay um, yeah it depends on it depends how, how deep the stress lines of the stress marks have gone because at the end of the day you can only you can only sort of sand and polish away the marks as deep as you go with them um, so I have I have certainly on more than one occasion discovered that the stress mark is actually in the plastic that I don't want to in plastic I don't want to remove um, and you've just got to suck it up at that point you can have a mirror mirror smooth surface that still has stress marks underneath it unfortunately um, so I try I try to avoid leaving stress marks as much as possible but sometimes Sometimes you just do, unfortunately. Right, so this one is going like so. found actually the a lot of whether a stress mark is left or not is is to do with the cutting more than anything else um, I found it's easier to or you get a better result often particularly with thicker gates that are going to leave big nubs to um, take it easy on the 
Uh, yeah, it, it, you're not wrong about that. It's um, it does have that feel to it. I'm going to be honest. I've put hula hoops on my fingers as an adult as well. Um, what I found with the um, what I found with the cutting is. see if we've got one yeah okay so we've got a fairly substantial nub here or a fairly substantial gate quite a thick one so what I'd do is take it off sort of here as the first cut but then when I'm doing the close cuts I'd probably do two cuts, one about a millimetre away from the surface and then one right close up at the surface. The more um, the more plastic you're cutting away in one go the more stress it applies to the remaining plastic so when you've got a lot of plastic to remove taking layers of it off at a time um, leaves you with less stress marks at the end of it is what I've found but I've only sort of picked that up through trial or error for trial and error that's not that's not something that I've I've ever heard anybody talk about um, but it, it sort of works for me um, these things are a matter of Scooty the Scoot, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Hope you're having a good evening. are rather nice were you uh, were you pleased with the result did it come out the way you wanted it to I've not built one of those myself so I'm not I don't know what the uh, what the build is like on that into a secret I I once used um, I once used fingernail clippers way back in the 90s but I did once use nail clippers to um, to take uh, to take parts off sprues so you know there is no shame and there is no judgment As long as you're happy with the result, that's all that really matters. You know. Uh, right, so. That's that built. And then this. goes in like so okay I gotta admit that result is pretty fucking cool. 
even if it did take forever to deal with these tiny pieces and getting them into position. And now I've got to do it again for the other side. Yay! Um, but it is 25 past 10 and we've been going for nearly three hours at this point so I'm afraid that is going to have to happen next stream. So, but something I did promise was that I would um, that I would bring out the um, or I would show off. Yeah, I'm afraid so, Scooty. Um, it's uh, it's getting on, and I've got to be in work tomorrow. But you 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 have come in at the perfect time to. Um, to see um, the result of the last build, which I haven't shown off on stream yet. So just bear with me a second whilst I get some things out of the way here so that we can get to the... Um, uh, no, I can go on a hanger. So that we can get to the model in question. Uh, that can go over there, that can join it. Let's put the lid on the stabby thing. It's always best to have lids on stabby things. The um, empty the bad sprinkles into the bin. Let's get these out of the way. These under here. of the way so this is the um, just uh, hang on a second so we're going to do uh, so um, try not to get dizzy so I can see what you're seeing as well. So this is the um, Perfect Grade Banshee Norn. Uh, no, let's not do that, that's not going to help. So this was several weeks worth of my life. It's absolutely enormous. Um, it lights up and it's just so fucking cool um, so let's do a bit of a swivel around so that you can see 
all of the bits. The shield is the most extra shield I have ever seen. It is just so daft and I love it. I love everything about this kit. Everything lights up. Even the backpack, the wings, and you've got these these little details on the legs where the armor opens up. The glowing and details in the backpack it's just everything about this is so so well put together this is I think easily the best kit I've built let's go in for a little look at the face here um, there are there are magnets in the horns so that when you close it together they will stick together properly. We've got this the beam magnum with the with the utterly ridiculous underbarrel grenade launcher and then all of the legs and it's just yeah everything about this is fantastic. Strongly recommend yeah, I think this is probably my new favourite at the moment. Um, I've got the regular unicorn version of this as well to build. Um, so we'll see how that... Let's just get that back up where it should be. We'll see how the regular version comes out looking. Just going to this back where I can't hurt it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I loved that build. It was so good. Um, it was, um, yeah, the thing, the, the, the fingers are, again, it's perfect grade. So all of the finger joints are articulated. It, it's, it's really good. Um, it, and it makes posing it really nice. You can get that. You can just get the fingers holding the, um, holding the gun really well um, and it looks it looks quite natural so um, I'm I'm really pleased with how it's really pleased with how it's all turned out and I'm looking forward to seeing what the um, what the regular unicorn looks like because it's a it, it's effectively a re, a recolor um, with or rather the banshee norn is a recolor of the unicorn with some extra bits um, so we'll we'll see what that what that comes out like, but they're going to be they they're effectively going to be bookends on a shelf once they're done. Um, I'm really really looking forward to um, seeing how that comes out, but I need a break from perfect grades at this point. That was a that was a hell of a build. <laughs> there was so much to it, and I just need something a little bit um, a little bit easier. Yeah, I, I can't afford, I can't afford, um, well, no, I could afford potentially a Phoenix. I have yet to see a PG Phoenix anywhere in the UK. Um, the, the closest thing, there is, there is one P-Bandai Banshee Norn Final Battle version for sale in the UK. Um, and it's like nearly 500 quid and that is too rich for my blood um, looks fantastic don't get me wrong but it, it's it's expensive um, but I've yet to see a PG Phoenix anywhere um, I've seen I think there's a master grade Phoenix is available in the UK um, yeah the, the P Bandai perfect grade um, the P Bandai Perfect Grade Banshee Norn Final Battle version is is even more daft than that one is, um, but it's got um, it's got a green inner frame on the on the uh, Final Battle version, which does look cool, but it's also it's still five hundred quid, so not so much. Um, there is there is supposedly. 
um, a Perfect Grade P Bandai Phoenix narrative version, the version with the tails that's coming out, but again that's expected to be like 600 700 quid and that's I just can't just can't do that so um, the I haven't gone for the master grade Phoenix because the the Phoenix really because of the shiny coating um, the Phoenix will really benefit from the undergating and um, that you get on the perfect grade that just isn't there on the master grade the master grade is it just doesn't have any undergating at all um, so the nub marks are really going to show on those um, on those sort of um, shi shiny coated parts, and there's nothing you can do about it. So I will I will leave that for the moment. Um, the only reason I'd I'd toyed with getting um, one of the phoenixes in master grade was so I could pinch the blue inner frame on it to put on the regular master grade unicorn I've got, but. It seems a it seems like a lot of effort to go to. Uh, Gundam Epion. I am not familiar with the Gundam Epion. What does one of those like look like? Uh, let's have a look. Gundam Epion. Master grade Gundam Epion. Okay, yeah, that looks cool. That's. Is that that seems kind of reminiscent of the Axia, particularly with the sort of glowing green gem in the centre of the chest? Um, that's cool. I like the look of that. Um, yeah, I'll have to keep an eye out for that one. My my backlog of um, my backlog of of kits is um, sufficient that I uh, I can't justify anything else at the moment I've got I've this is Abby's got to get built and then I've got um, I've got two um, two heavy arms variants that need building the heavy arms custom and the heavy arms idle unit um, and I've got the Barbatos the master grade Barbatos that needs building and then I've got the perfect grade unicorn and a perfect grade um, strike freedom so I can't justify another kit right now um, I've got to at least get this one built before I get another one it's payday tomorrow though so we'll see how long that resolution lasts um, but yeah it's been a good stream we've made we've made some definite progress here um, it's a shame I wasn't able to get this this belt unit, this waist unit finished this evening, but it was going to be it was going to be another sort of half hour to get this. Um... Oh, thank you very much, Scotty. Appreciate it. Sorry, Scooty. Um, it would have been nice to get the other half of this belt finished, but we'll just have to do that next time because um, I suspect this is going to sit here like so when it's done um, but I I was not expecting this I was just expecting a solid yellow piece that was going to go around but this this segmented thing is is really clever um, and the the result is a really nice effect I'm I'm very pleased with how that comes out looking let's bring this up here so you can see more clearly I'm very pleased with the with the effect of that um, I'm for, certainly for for the first three hours of this getting into this build. I am really impressed with this kit. Um, it's uh, it's made a very good first impression on me. So we'll see we'll see how it continues on as the build continues. Um, I will be back on Saturday, um, seven seven thirty ish UK time. Um, I will be back. We will be continuing with this build um, because this has been fun. Uh, I apologise that I've been missing the last couple of weeks, but it's just been it's been a bit hectic around here. Um, things are now settling down, which is good. Um, so uh, yeah, 
I'm I'm glad to be back and it's good to see people today and it's good to meet new people. Scooty, I know you're coming at the end, but it's always nice to meet meet um, meet fresh faces in chat. So welcome, and uh, I uh, hopefully I will see you again in the future, um, and hopefully I'll see you all again in the future. I think that's everything. You can find me on Twitter at. Tremaine Alex um, updates and any changes to the stream schedule will be posted there along potentially with some cat pictures uh, due to you know the whole new kitten situation um, I make no promises that I'm going to be able to resist posting cat pictures I'm sure you'll all cope um, right everybody have a fantastic evening I will see you in the future uh, and yeah, have a good evening. <laughs>